All right, so what if we have right here a 10 pound weight at A, uh, it's supported by cord AC and roller C, um, and by spring AB. The spring has an unstretched length of 8 inches, and the weight is in equilibrium when D is equal to 4 inches. So this is equal to 4 inches right here. Uh, determine the stiffness K of the spring. Okay. Well, what should I draw a free body diagram for? Weight A. So let's draw a free body diagram for weight A. What are the forces acting at weight A? Well, it has some weight, right? 10 pounds. So that, that is the weight. So this was a, this is a problem in English units, which is perfectly fine. Let's don't, you know, get, uh, don't fret about English units. But that is the weight, 10 pounds, so that's 10 right there. Don't have to multiply times gravity or anything like that. Uh, then I've got the tension in rope AC, and I've got the force in cable AB right there. I've got the force in cable AB right there. What angle is this at? Well, I could kind of figure out theta, but I, I like to do the dimensions. It is over 12 up 4. It is over 12 up 4. And so that means that this hypotenuse right here would be, you know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared would be 12.65. Its length is 12, 12.65 right now. All right. And so let me define my axes, x and y. Um, and I think that's almost self-sufficient. This force in the spring is K delta X. It wants to know the stiffness of the spring. So we don't know K, but I think we do know delta X. 12.65, uh, that is not the, that's not what I'm plugging right there. Um, delta X is the stretch. If its current length is 12.65 and its unstretched length was 8, then that delta x, 4.65, right? That delta x would be 4.65. Okay, so now I think I'm ready to sum the forces in the x direction. I've got negative tension in AC. Uh, I've got positive, the uh, 12 over 12.65 component of the force, and the force is K times 4.65 right there and set that equal to zero but that has two unknowns i don't know k i don't know tension ac so summing the forces in the y direction negative 10 pointed down but pointed up the 4 over 12.65 component of the force k uh delta x K delta X. So from this one, and actually from this one alone, that's kind of the only equation I needed uh, to solve for K. I would get a K value of 6.8. All right, let's, let's look at the, I didn't keep up with my units, I really should have. This is pounds, right? This is pounds. If this is pounds, this needs to be pounds, right? Ha units have to be homogeneous. So this 4 over 12.65, that's just a ratio. It, it's, you know, inches over inches. It's unitless right there. Uh, this is in inches. So if I want to end up with units of pounds, then this K value would have to be pounds per inch right there. So this is pounds per inch. A K value is the amount of force per stretch. It's amount of force per stretch. So its units are going to be newtons per meter, you know, or in this case, pounds per inch, pounds per foot. You know, it could give any units, but it's going to be kind of be a force divided by a dimension because it's it's how much force keeps getting, um, you know, put into or, or by the spring for every bit of stretch or compression it has. So let's take a step back and look, look back over it. We drew a free body diagram. Force in the spring is K delta X. Our equations, equilibrium equations, equal to zero in order to solve for K 6.8 pounds per inch.